morning, fellas. Hope you guys had a good Christmas and we're headed to a wonderful new year, right? Oh, yes. And for those that are dialing in and seeing this video recording, we're a group that meets on Saturday mornings for decades. We have been brought together by God himself. So I talked to the group a minute ago about some things on my mind and it has to do with uh, our relationship with God. And the mercy and grace that God gives us. And the one thing that God wants the most from us is for us to love him. And he helps us love him the way he wants to be loved. But uh, so we're going to read Isaiah chapter 44, where Isaiah has been prophesying earlier in the book about the sins of Israel and the judgments of God. And we're getting to the end of his prophecy. And I'm reading the NIV version. You guys want to pray real quick that the listeners can uh, get something out of this, right? Father God, we thank you that you love us. We thank you that you have come into our lives and changed our lives. And you've opened our eyes to who you are. And we've accepted your son, Jesus, as his gift of salvation. And we pray that what we're about to read is not only meaningful to our minds, but also changes our hearts. We love you, Lord. Amen. All right, here we go. Verse 40, or chapter 44, verse 1 of Isaiah. God's talking. But now listen, Jacob, my servant, Israel, whom I have chosen. This is what the Lord says. He who made you, who formed you in the womb, and who will help you. Do not be afraid, Jacob, my servant, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. They will spring up like grass in a meadow, like poplar trees by flowing streams. Some will say, I belong to the Lord's. Others will call themselves by the name of Jacob. Still others will write on their hand, the Lord's, and will take the name Israel. And a commentary there, you know, we all as fathers and grandfathers, maybe great grandfathers, right? We want our descendants to know the Lord like we do. And we want to know the Lord even better than we know him now. And here he's saying, your descendants are going to say, I belong to the Lord. And others are going to call themselves by the name of Jacob. And others are going to write on their hand, the Lord's like, I belong to the Lord, right? And that's exactly what we would want in our families, right? The next section here, he goes into the idols. And if you remember, these guys were basically worshiping idols. They knew the Lord, and yet they were diverted and worshiping idols. And this is the next section here. This is what the Lord says. Israel's king and redeemer, the Lord Almighty. I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. That's a statement. We all know that. And yet we have to be careful not to be diverted into thinking other things are more important than God, right? Verse seven, who then is like me? So God throws out a challenge. Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and lay out before me what has happened since I established my ancient people and what is yet to come yet. Yes. Let them foretell what, what will come. Do not tremble. Do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim this and foretell it long ago? God is in control fellas, right? Amen. You are my witnesses. So we in this room are witnesses to God, right? Is there any God besides me? No. There is no other rock. I know not one. And that's a stake in the ground that our group has set, right? Verse 9. All who make idols are nothing. And the things they treasure are worthless. Those who would speak up for them are blind. They are ignorant to their own shame. Who shapes a God and casts an idol? which can profit nothing. People who do that will be put to shame. Such craftsmen are only human beings. 
Let them all come together and take their stand. They will be brought down to terror and shame. Now we see it all the time, guys, where the truth is not the truth and false stuff is being defended. And this is kind of what he's talking about. Here it is, verse 12. The blacksmith takes a tool and works with it in the coals. He shapes an idol with hammers. He forges this with, with he forges it with the might of arm. He gets hungry and loses his strength. Mm. He drinks no water and grows faint. We were just talking about how we feel sometimes, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, verse 15, the carpenter. I can relate to that, right? So can George. The carpenter measures with a line and makes an outline with a marker. He roughs it out with chisels and marks it with compasses. He shapes it in human form, human form in all its glory, that it may dwell in a shrine. He cuts down cedars or perhaps took a cypress or oak. He let it grow among the trees of the forest or planted a pine. And the rain made it grow. It is used as fuel for burning. Some of it he takes and warms himself. He kindles a fire and bakes bread, but he also fashions a god and worships it. Mm. He makes an idol and bows down to it. Half of the wood he burns in the fire. Over it he prepares his meal. He roasts his meat and eats his fill. He also warms himself and says, ah, I am warm. I see the fire. From the rest, he makes a god, his idol. He bows down to it and worships. He prays to it and says, save me. You are my god. Verse 18, they know nothing. They understand nothing. Their eyes are plastered over so they cannot see. And their minds closed so they cannot understand. No one stops to think. No one has the knowledge or understanding to say, half of it I use for fuel. I even baked bread over its coals. I roasted meat and I ate. Shall I make a detestable thing from what is left? Shall I bow down to a block of wood? Such a person feeds on ashes. A deluded heart misleads him. He cannot save himself or say, is not this thing in my right hand a lie? Take a breath. Think about that for a minute. We're seeing these things now, fellas. Verse 21. This is the awesome part for us. Remember these things, Jacob, for you, Israel, are my servant. I have made you. You are my servant, Israel. I will not forget you. I have swept away your offenses like a cloud, your sins like the morning mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. This is the section I wanted to highlight this morning. I'm going to repeat this again. After all that stuff I just read about idols and you know turning away from God and stuff, and really defending lies, this is 44, verse 21. Remember these things, Jacob, for you, Israel, are my servants. I have made you. You are my servant, Israel. I will not forget you. I have swept away your offenses like a cloud, your sins like the morning mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Now, here's our reaction to that. Verse 23, sing for joy, you heavens, for the earth has done this. Shout aloud, you earth beneath. First into song, you mountains, you forest, and all your trees. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob. He displays his glory in Israel. Amen. As I think about this, I worry about the list of sins and the things that I didn't do that he called me to do, the opportunities that I've missed. And yet, 
the Lord wants me to return to him and he wants to wipe away my sins and he wants me to serve him. He wants you to do the same. Amen. So if you're watching this recording, everybody beats around the bush. I'll tell you directly. Admit you're wrong. God knows you've sinned. You do too. You can't fix yourself. So you need to accept God's gift. Don't be so proud that you cannot accept the gift. Pride keeps you away from God. Turn, humble yourself, the Bible says, and pray. Admit your sins. Repent. Ask for his forgiveness. Accept his son, that's his gift to you. Accept him as your savior. So he's your Lord and your savior. Your savior, he saves you from your sins. The Lord, he begins to talk, tell you what to do. Accept him, start doing what he tells you to do. You do that and God will accept you back just like this verse just said. And that's what being a Christian is. Admitting you're wrong, accept Jesus and start following him. <clears throat> Amen to that. I can't make it any more direct. Yeah. And it's a choice, and, by the way. At, at, at this point, we typically will uh, open up the the microphones to everybody and anybody here on this uh, uh, meeting and, and have discussion about what uh, the leader just shared. And uh, I'm going to, since I'm talking, I'm going to go first. Uh, it, it, it dawned on me, you know, somebody who's watching this might think, well, I'm not a carpenter and I really don't um, cut down wood and burn wood and, and, and make graven images. So he's what he's talking about doesn't apply to me. Well, let me just put my two cents out there for whatever it's worth. Uh, anything that you're doing that uh, is to you more important than spending time in prayer or in meditation or study of God's word or reading God's word or uh, attending a, a fellowship group, whether it's in a church and or uh, a group of like-minded Christian believers um, that you put as being more, and, and I'm not saying you can't go to a ball game or you can't attend a birthday party, but you know, you, there's other things that you do, but there are times when you need to spend um, in a relationship building mode, you have to spend time with that person that you want to build a relationship with. And you may not be cutting down trees and burning half the wood and making a graven image out of uh, the rest of the tree, but you may be ignoring any time with God. And what the, the verses preceding the, the last one that talks about God wiping away your sins like he sweeps the clouds away or the morning mist is there one minute and it's gone the next um, the fact is there's there are times that we waste doing things that are totally unproductive and we could be spending time developing a relationship with our creator who not only created us but created eternity for us to spend with him so um I just thought I'd throw that out there for anybody who was uh, thinking that, well, this didn't really apply to me, what that, what that guy Steve was saying. So I'll shut up and let Tim or Tom or John or Patrick speak. Well, I'll talk about for a second. I got a, <clears throat> since you talked about relationships, first of all, when the guy comes ready to uh, commit that he's a, Admit that he's a sinner. There's three things you need to do there. And they're very simple. Admit it, quit it, and forget it. You know, Steve talked about receiving what the Lord's free gift was. That's part of it. But the first thing we got to do, just like in uh, what's the 12 steps of Alcoholic Anonymous, admit you got a problem. You know, admit that there's something there you can't fix yourself. And in Matt and then john 15 jesus says i think it's verse eight i think he says you can do nothing without without me you can do nothing and then the other part about what we were just talking about in uh second peter chapter one there's three places where it talks about 
the answer of what God wants us to do. You know, Steve said, what does the Lord want me to do? He wants us to love him. He is looking for a man after his own heart. And also he wants us to know him. He wants to, he knows us. He wants us to know him. It says in uh, second Peter chapter one, verse two, do you want more and more of God's kindness and peace? Then learn to know him better and better. For as you know him better, he will give you through his great power, everything you need for living a truly good life. He even shares his own glory and his own goodness with us. And by the same mighty power, he has given us all the other riches and wonderful blessings he promised. For instance, the promise to save us from the lust and rottenness all around us and to give us his own character. And then it goes on and on. Then in verse, uh, uh, let's just go to verse five. But to obtain these gifts, you need more than faith. You must also work hard to be good. And even that is not enough. For then you must learn to know God better and discover what he wants you to do. That's number two. He says it three times in this chapter. And then at the, uh, uh, let's see here. Talk to Mark number three. Anyway, there's three times in that chapter where uh, Peter encourages us to get to know the Lord. Oh, here it is. It's in a different chapter, but it's in the same book. It's Second uh, Peter chapter two, maybe chapter three, verse 17, right at the end. He says, I'm warning you ahead of time, dear brothers so that you can watch out and not be carried away by the mistakes of these wicked men, lest you yourselves become mixed up too, but grow in spiritual strength and become better acquainted with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be all glory and splendor. To him be all glory and splendid honor, both now and forever. Goodbye, Peter. So basically, there's three times in a, a couple of chapters where he said, get to know the Lord, get to know the Lord, get to know the Lord, know him better and better. And I feel like um, that goes along with um, he wants us to love him, because how can you love him if you don't get to know him? And so he wants us to draw. He says in James, I think George quoted it, you know, uh, God will draw close to us if we draw close to him. So get to know him. And how do you do that? Get in the word. Get in groups like this that are talking about the word, talking about the Lord. And the word is truth. And uh, so anyway, we grow from there spiritually. We become mature. And then we are able to go out and bring others into the kingdom. So that was my two cents. Awesome. Yeah, I'd like to add one of the... Um... The phrases as well says they'll know we are Christians by our love. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, first of all, what are we loving? You know, the whole idol thing, you know, we can love our, you know, where. When you look at where you spend your time, that's what you love. So if I'm on my phone, on social media, sh binge watching shows all the time, or even if I'm at work and I'm distracted with something else, wherever my mind is, that's what I love. So where is my time being spent? My, my thought time and my action time. That's the love part that that phrase talks about is people can see you, see your actions and know if you're a loving person and, or, or are you doing something just to get yourself fed you know you're doing something because you want to be recognized well that's not that's not what he's talking about it's are you a loving person whether people are watching or not are you a loving person in your actions and in your deeds and um and again caring to yourself as well if you don't take care of yourself you're showing that you don't even love yourself 
and you know love your neighbor as yourself we have to love ourselves not selfishness but love ourselves enough to take care of ourselves so we can serve god in a bigger and better way and of course the love your neighbor through all the actions that we do and my favorite verses after the lord's prayer is in in, in the bible where it's written in matthew is if you don't forgive other people none of the stuff you just prayed can even happen. Mm. So the ultimate act of love is forgiving someone for what they did. You're not acknowledging that it was, it wasn't a big deal. It's okay. They did it. That's not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is just not letting it have a hold on you anymore and just mm. let it go <clears throat> and turn our eyes to Christ. Amen. Okay, John, we're up to six cents. Uh, we need a dime. Oh. Okay. You and Patrick each need two cents in here so we can get a dime's worth of uh, comments. I was going to go the other way. I was only going to give one cent. <laughs> um, you know, how, how the Lord loves us and all that is so true. Uh, but I also wanted to say that as we love other people, that uh, we can't be afraid to tell them the truth. Uh, we have to do it gently, but, but make sure they understand the truth and not just, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's okay, you know, uh, to, to live in this particular lifestyle, or whatever, you know, you just accept me and all that kind of stuff or whatever, whatever the case may be, but, you know, so I'm just, I would just like to add, add that one sentence that, you know, we have to tell them the truth in love. I agree with that. Good very important. I'm going to go straight to the point. As several people said, what does God want? And in this reading, uh, Steve said it. He wants us to love him. If you look at the Gospel of St. John, and God is Jesus Christ, he says what God wants when he was asked what does God want, he said he wants you to love the person he sent. And that was love God through Jesus Christ, his son. All right, then we've been taught, I hope Tim remembers this, uh, at our Sunday meetings, God is love. What is love? Love is an energy. Love is God. Therefore, if you love somebody, you are one with them. And it's an energy that you produce and that you use, and that's what God is. So the most important thing that God wants us to do in my opinion, is to love him and be one with him, period. That, that's worth a dollar. All right. If it's okay, let me pull this together. If you're watching, I talked about pride. A lot of people would rather hold on to their past life and justify their life. And really, the Lord wants you to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, and he'll give you a better life. But you have to humble yourself and accept God's gift. He loves you and really does want you to be his servant. He wants you to love him. So let's pray real quick and close this out. Father God, we thank you that you have come into our lives and you have forgiven us of our sins and you've helped us to over time understand more and more about who you are so that we can love you more and more and i pray that on our group you'll continue to bless us and help us to continue to humble ourselves and continue to move and live in your spirit and have your hand on the people watching this video that they can make to take the action right now to stop and pray to you and accept Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, Tom. See you. God bless you. Uh, Tom's going to leave us if Still you guys are not George. Pardon me? Turn off the recording. Well, I want to I want to leave it on for a second. Oh, okay. I wanted to make a comment about uh, the 
thing that Tim said about admit it, quit it, and forget it. Um, those are uh, very easy to remember uh, phrases, but the hard part of it is the last part, and that's the forgetting it. And we can tell ourselves that we want to forget it, but the devil will keep reminding us about our past and uh, try to uh, make us think that it isn't erased. It's still there uh, and, and just keep continue. So if you're listening to this and you get one of those moments where you thought you admitted it and you quit it and now you can't forget it, it keeps coming back. Just tell the enemy to shut up. You're not listening to him. You're going to listen to the truth that is the word of God and that you will, uh, you, you know, what, what you're hearing is not your, uh, your memory. It's the devil coming back to you and trying to remind you of your past, but remind him of his future if he does that. Yeah. And now I'll stop the recording. <laughs>